What is going on today guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 2023 F250 Super Duty with the 6.7 Power Stroke and behind it we have a fully loaded trailer. In fact, this is the max towing capacity of this F250 sitting behind me right here and we're going to tow it down the highway and do a little towing review. So that should be fun. But first of all, as a heavy duty licensed diesel mechanic, I'm gonna take this truck in the shop and we're gonna go over some engine specs as to why this thing is gonna be such a great towing engine. So let's do that right now. First of all, I don't know what Ford is doing with the front of the grill here. I think it just doesn't look good. And judging from my own comment section, you guys also agree this is kind of horrendous. In this truck right here, we have a standard output power stroke diesel engine. And I talked about this much more in depth, maybe a couple months ago. I'll put a link down to the video down below if you guys are more interested. But I figured we'd go over some major details, some details that I really like about this Power Stroke and maybe explain why I think this thing will be such a good towing engine. So this Power Stroke is producing 475 horsepower as well as 1,000 50 pound feet of torque and i know i know 2023 is when they released the high output version with 1200 foot pounds of torque and uh, unfortunately i just can't get my hands on it right now but i will in 2011 ford dropped this completely in-house built 67 power stroke diesel and this marked the split off between the Ford and International Partnership when it came to making diesel engines for these Super Duties. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because this 6.7 has done very well. And the predecessors, the 6.4 liter Power Stroke was nothing but really complete hot garbage. Even the six liter was really not that best of an engine. So it seems like Ford made a really good decision uh, building their own engine and going off on their own. Now there are a couple key takeaways with this engine that give it an advantage over its competitors, which I want to touch on today. And the first one is the fact that they have their intake and exhaust reversed from a traditional V8 configuration. So I know this probably just looks like a big conglomeration of piping and whatnot, but um, basically a traditional V8, you have your exhaust ports on the outside of the banks and you have your intakes on the inside of the banks. And this makes perfect sense for a naturally aspirated V8 engine. However, when you throw a turbocharger in here, it makes things a little bit more complex. So what Ford did is they stuck the turbocharger right dead smack center of the two engine banks. And so what this means is that your intakes are actually on the outsides of the banks. Now there's a couple good reasons why Ford did this. And the main one is increases thermal efficiency to the turbo. The second reason is that it helps to eliminate some of the pumping loss. Now that's all kind of scientific. Basically what that means is there is less energy wasted um, and there's more energy going into your turbo. So that means that more energy is going into your turbo and being transferred into mechanical energy to your wheels on the road. Now the second thing that I really like about this Power Stroke engine here is the fact that it is an under square engine. And I think it really gives an advantage to this engine in comparison to its competitors like the Duramax. So an under square engine, I always talk about this because I think it's important. Uh, basically what that means is the stroke of the piston is larger than the bore of the piston. And what that allows is for very easy natural torque to be made. Uh, because with a long stroke, your crank throw is longer, which means it has a mechanical leverage, meaning you can make torque easier. That's the whole gist behind that. Now, traditionally, and most V8s, if not all V8s, are usually an over-square engine, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, because usually an over-square engine, um, you have a lighter rotating mass, they rev very quickly, which is why we see a lot of V8s and stuff like Mustangs, Corvettes, because they rev very quickly and they're very powerful engines, but usually they make their power at the higher end of the RPM band. So this is really not your traditional V8. I think Ford really did some good engineering to make sure that this is an underscore engine, giving it a really long crank throw. Um, we see, you know, like the Duramax, they did not do that, although it still makes torque very low in the RPM band, but this engine, I imagine, is just gonna to make torque much easier without much tuning, much tweaking, simply because of that mechanical advantage. So that's something I really like about this engine. Another reason why I think this is gonna be a great towing engine is because of the strength and the robustness of the bottom end that Ford put in here. This is a really, really tough engine. Starting with the engine block, we have a composite graphite engine block, deep skirt, and in 2020, there's even more strength added to it. We got a forged crankshaft. That forged crankshaft is held in um, by six bolt 
main bearing caps, which is, you know, more than the Duramax, which only has four, more than the Cummins, which only uses two bolt mains. The main journal caps on this engine are a fractured journal cap, which is the strongest possible journal cap you can actually get. Um, these cylinder heads, there are six bolts per cylinder in these cylinder heads. Again, that is more than the Duramax and the Cummins, which both only employ four bolts per cylinder head. So this thing is strong. Lastly, in 2020, Ford went with steel pistons in this engine. Yes, steel pistons. Again, comparing it to our competitors, the Duramax and the Cummins uh, both use an aluminum alloy piston. And since Ford went to a steel piston, they had to beef up the, the forged connecting rod and the connecting rod bearing. So this thing is a very, very robust engine. Now, personally, I found it almost ingenious what Ford did with these steel pistons, because, you know, we all know that, that steel is, yes, it's heavier than aluminum and having a heavier rotating assembly is not necessarily the best thing. But what Ford also understood is that since steel is so much stronger than aluminum, you can use less of it. And so the end result is a piston that weighs almost the exact same weight as the previous generation aluminum piston. Now, yes, I'm praising the hell out of this engine and you're right, it is not perfect. And if you guys are more interested in some things that I really don't like about this engine, again, I'll link that video down below where I talk about that. So that is the power plant we were gonna be testing with the max towing capacity of this truck when we load up a trailer behind it and uh, take it down the freaking highway. So let's load this thing up and uh, let's go talk about the towing ability of this Super Duty right here. Well, today we have something more exciting than just concrete blocks. We got the old power wagon up on the trailer to use as weight. And then behind it, we do have two concrete blocks, roughly around 2,400 pounds, giving us a grand total of 16,000 pounds of trailer weight. And right away, guys, you guys can see, we are nose diving like crazy. Yes, there is a slight nose dive, but actually the floors in the shop they're kind of like tilted like this, so it makes it look really bad. It's not as bad as that, but uh, 16,000 pounds. Some of you guys may be saying, how is that the max towing capacity of a power stroke? Well, in fact, with the truck I have here, this F250 Super Duty, that is actually, in fact, the max towing ability of this truck, and I'll show you how. So first of all, this is only a 2,500, meaning it's not gonna have those massive 36,000 pound towing numbers that a that a 3500 dually would have. So that's number one. The second reason why this max towing ability is a little bit low has to do with the gearing in this truck. This truck has 331 gears, meaning that it can actually only tow 5,800 pounds. That's the maximum. And we are actually slightly above that, slightly. And I'll tell you in a sec why that does not worry me at all. Now the max towing number of this F250 can dramatically improve doing one of three things. So the first thing is you can get the power stroke with the 331 gears, but you get an axle upgrade. So you get the 12.4 the inch rear end here, and that will give you a max towing capacity in this configuration of truck of 22,000 pounds. So a big upgrade. The second option is you get the high output power stroke that will automatically give you 22,000 pounds of max towing. And the third option is, well, if you get the standard output uh, power stroke, but you get 355 gears, that will also give you 22,000 pounds of max trailing ability. So there is a number of ways, and most trucks, I imagine, will be configured like that, but uh, this truck is not, so that's why we only have 
16,000 pounds behind her. So unlike the Duramax, um, I was a little bit concerned about being overloaded with that truck and trailer. This truck, I'm not really concerned at all for a couple hundred pounds over, which we probably are. Um, the first reason is the hitch. So in 2023, Ford actually added some strength to their two and a half inch receiver on the Super Duty lineup. So in a 2500, the max bumper pull or conventional trailer pull is 22,000 pounds. And that is a ton of weight off the bumper. And not only did they double down on that, if you have a 3500, you can tow up to 30,000 pounds out of this two and a half inch receiver, which is an incredible amount of weight to be bumper pulling. Um, so this thing has a ton of added strength. And you know, to put that into perspective, a 2023 F-150 with only a two inch receiver, the max trailering weight you can use on that without a weight distributing hitch is only 6,000 pounds. So the fact that you can put 22,000 pounds on here and not have to worry about it is pretty impressive. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not too, too worried if we're three or 400 pounds over the max trailing weight of this specific truck. The second reason is the power stroke and the 10 speed transmission are rated for well above um, 15,800 pounds in other applications. So there'll be plenty of power. I'm not worried about that at all. Third reason why I'm not too worried is because, well, this trailer is rated for 21,000 pounds. Um, even though, again, if we're a couple hundred pounds over, even if we're like 16.2, uh, we're gonna be well within the range of this trailer. So again, I'm not too worried at all. We'll weigh it like we did last week and we'll get the official trailer weights and numbers, which I think will be fun. Okay, so before we hit the road, we're gonna put this thing in tow haul mode. I actually had to look up how to do it. There's a drive mode button and you switch it. Normally it's just a button for tow haul mode. I don't know, I guess it works, but I had to look it up. It wasn't easy to find. Um, boom, there we go. So we're in tow haul mode. Um, and then we're obviously gonna put the exhaust brake on. Absolutely. All right, first little, uh, pole here get her up to some speed oh yeah you can tell she is got some weight behind her but uh, again like the Duramax these diesels they're just all business and uh, there's really not much too much drama to it so there you go we're rolling we're rolling here we go one thing I want to point out, which I like about the Fords, well, there's two things. The first thing is you can actually see your, your turbo boost, which I think is going to be really cool when we're going up some hills to see. And then you always get to see what gear you're in, which uh, I always like to see that as well. We are about to jump on the Trans Canada, the highway. Um, let's do this. Let's get this thing up to speed. Cruising speed is going to be 110 kilometers an hour, which is the speed limit. And that should keep everything all good and safe because safety is number one on this channel sometimes all right 60 kilometers an hour let's get a first little pull here all right foot to the floor Not enough tongue weight on this thing. This trailer's swaying around like crazy. That's my own fault. We're gonna back this truck up, maybe a foot, maybe two. We're gonna put more weight down on the, on the back end here because uh, it's a little unsafe. The thing's swaying like crazy. I'm not happy about it. So we're gonna make a little bit of adjustment. Not quite on the side of the highway, but pretty darn close. So let's go ahead and do that. So we moved the truck a little bit forward on the trailer. Got some more weight on the tongue um, and the trailer swaying quite a bit less. It is still swaying back there. I imagine those two concrete blocks have a lot to do with it, but this is a max towing capacity test. So uh, we are testing the truck to the limit. Um, so we're only gonna go 100 kilometers an hour. 110, the truck just doesn't seem to wanna sit there and the trailer just really starts to sway. So we're gonna keep it 100 kilometers an hour. It feels pretty happy here. And uh, we'll see what this thing's got because uh, it is still a heavy load behind her. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what this truck's all about. So 
So what's cool to see is um, Ford will ride in 10th gear in tow haul mode, which is an overdrive gear. And, you know, especially with having 331 gears on this truck like we do, that is gonna be a quite heavy of an overdrive. Yet, what's nice about a diesel is, if you guys can see my turbo gauge there, is the turbo will just spool up and just push this truck forward um, regardless. And so you don't actually have to downshift like you would in a naturally aspirated engine. The turbo just spools up and just keeps you going. So it is kind of cool to see that you can ride in an overdrive gear going, you know, highway speeds. So you see we got a little bit of a hill here, like nothing crazy, but you can see the turbo is actually just spooling up more. No downshift needed. We keep 100 kilometers an hour. Turbo just adds more boost to the engine and therefore more power and more torque. Um, so that is, again, the beauty of towing with a diesel is you just have that turbo and it can spool it up. Now, one thing I would have wished GM added is a turbo gauge because it's just really nice to see where your turbo's at, how much boost you're making, and it just gives you more data when you're towing, which is, you know, the more the better. Now you can see we have a little bit of a downhill here and, you know, that exhaust brake, I feel like it's a little bit more functionable than the Duramax. The Duramax, you could feel the exhaust brake work higher in the rpm bands much much better but you know when you're cruising at let's say i don't know 1500 rpm here give or take 1300 rpm the exhaust brake is much more noticeable in this power stroke for sure um, which i think is a good thing because you know especially when you're towing you don't necessarily want to wait till you're at like 2500 rpm to have that exhaust brake really kick in you want it to kick in right away so you don't necessarily have to downshift less work on the engine and the less work you can put on the engine, the better, again, when you're towing. So good on Ford. This exhaust brake seems to work really, really well. And when we get to some bigger hills, we'll see this thing working in full capacity. Nice little valley. This thing is holding us at 100 kilometers an hour with absolute ease. We're at like 1300 RPM. The Duramax was at like 2500, even shifted to like 50 or like 3100 RPM. Uh, this thing is working just great. Oh, we're swaying a little too much. This thing is nervous Nelly on the electronics. Jesus. Um, and that truck almost ran off the road up there. Hopefully we don't do that. But yeah, wow. There we go. We're at 1400 RPM. That was pretty impressive the way that thing didn't even have to downshift. Like again, this exhaust brake is a pretty powerful unit and that's exactly what you want to see when you're in tow haul mode with a big load behind you. Now, in terms of power in comparison to the Duramax, this thing does feel like it has quite a bit more get up and go. The Duramax by no means was not powerful. It was a very powerful unit and it was very impressive with more weight, mind you. Um, so we have roughly 3,500 pounds less weight here. Although our gearing is not as high, that Duramax had 342 gears, we have 331. So that's gonna affect it a little bit. I mean, this thing just feels like it is ready to go. With 16,000 pounds behind us, there is zero sweat. There is no drama. This thing just moves. It's making absolute easy work out of this um, quote unquote max towing capacity run here. So very impressive, but that's honestly what I thought I would get. So no surprise there, but plenty of power for sure out of this standard output power stroke. We made it to our halfway point. As you guys can see, I had to shift the power wagon further up just to put more tongue weight on the front because this thing is swaying like crazy. It also is a very windy day. So I don't know if the wind's catching on the truck and just pushing the trailer. That could also be it because I'm pretty sure I have a lot of weight on this tongue, but we're gonna go scale it right over there and we will see for sure how much weight's actually on the tongue here. Be good right there. Yes, sir. Tell him he can drive on whenever he sees that green light. You got it right there. Okay. So scale one, two is your truck. Scale three be your trailer weight. Right, right. He's all set. 
Okay, pull off and go inside. Awesome, thanks, sir. No appreciate problem. it, man. So we got our official weight. We're a little heavier than I thought. We're about 16.5, um, so we are about 700 pounds overweight, technically. Um, so there's that. The big thing I was interested in is the tongue weight. Now I did just some, some quick math on how much the truck weighs. We have technically, I believe, um, just over 1,600 pounds of tongue weight. So, um, you know, we are right within 10%. And this thing is so uncomfortable on the road. Like, it's, it's not fun to drive. Whereas last week with the Duramax, um, yes, we were not overloaded like we are here, but again, we're not like we're crazy overloaded. Um, I didn't even have 10% tongue weight. I only had like 1,900 pounds of tongue weight on a 20,000 pound tow, give or take. And that thing was solidly planted. It is not fun to drive right now. So a little disappointing, a little disappointing. All right, we're pulling out of our halfway stop. We're gonna get back on the highway and uh, chug her home. Hopefully no incidents on the way. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm very curious to crunch the official numbers and see exactly how much this thing weighs and all that fun stuff because it has not been a fun ride driving this thing out here. Now, maybe that is due to the different cargo we have on there. Like, I don't think my truck is that crazy different aerodynamic. I mean, yeah, it kind of sticks out, but it's not like it's this huge sail back there. The other thing I could maybe think of is we were headed into a really strong headwind, but again, like my truck's not a huge sail, so I don't think that would affect it that much. The trailer's the exact same, the hitch, the coupler, it's all the exact same. And the Duramax was just so planted, and this thing is not. And it's almost a little bit too much to dry. Like, uh, yeah, anyways, we'll get this thing back to the shop and uh, we'll go from there. All right, ahead of us, we have the mini, mini Ike Gauntlet. Not only are we not going through the mountains, but we don't have any elevation either. But still, I'm gonna call it the mini, mini Ike Gauntlet. And it's about 600 feet of elevation, and I know that doesn't sound like much, but it gets these engines working, and I'm excited to see what this power stroke is all about. Um, we'll monitor what this thing does. If it can keep 100 kilometers an hour, I can almost bet my life that it will because this thing is actually really, really powerful. And uh, she's doing, you can hear that exhaust break as we're going into the valley, keeping this thing or trying to keep this thing at speed. We're almost hitting 3,000 RPM, which is a lot for a diesel, but uh, she's doing a good job. And then once we hit the bottom of the valley, we're gonna be working to get on up with a full load behind us here, which is exciting. So here we go, starting the climb. All right, we're in ninth gear here, just under 1500 RPM. We're starting to lose speed, okay, downshift eighth gear, about 1700 RPM. You can see our boost. We are boosting well into the 30s there. Damn, she's just gonna stay in eighth gear, not even above 2000 RPM. <laughs> Turbo spooling up pretty good as you guys can see. That is in KPAs, which God knows what that means. I have no clue. Um, but uh, yeah, it looks, I'm assuming we're well above 20 PSI of boost pressure right now. That is pretty impressive that we are staying below 2000 RPM. I thought for sure we'd drop another gear, but not the case at all. Just goes to show this power stroke has plenty of power, even with the 331 gears. God, imagine if we had the 355s, it would climb this, this hill in 10th gear probably, in overdrive. Um, yeah. That was nothing. That was nothing. The mini, mini Ike was no challenge for the power stroke. Um, 
I told you guys this last week, but when I had my, my powers wagon with this trailer just empty, it was at like 4,000 RPM just trying to keep speed. So, um, But once again, it just goes to show that diesels, they perform extremely well when it comes to towing and they are worth the money if you are looking for the best towing rig, without a doubt. So okay, we're at 80 kilometers an hour and then, you know, you put your foot into it with 16,000 pounds behind you, boom, 100 kilometers an hour. Like, there is so much power in this power stroke. It's almost a little ridiculous to have it in a truck that can only pull 15,800 pounds because, you know, it's gonna pull that like, like no tomorrow, and it does. So, you know, the, the engine is awesome. I, I, I really, it has grown on me since I reviewed it a couple months ago. One thing that I just will not be able to get over is a CP4 fuel pump. I would never buy an engine with that fuel pump on it. That's just me, but again, I have just, <laughs> the writing's on the wall for that pump, and uh, it, it's just it's just no good. So we are nearing the end of our little round trip towing. We're about 170 kilometers in. Our fuel is about 22 liters per 100K, which is better than the Duramax, but again, we have less weight, so it's kind of hard to compare, um, as well as the gearing's different. So. But still, I mean, not the worst fuel economy for 16,000 pounds behind her. This power stroke has plenty of power. That is definitely the highlight of this towing trip for this truck. This power stroke is just, it, it's a beast, it's a workhorse, and uh, it, it's, it'll, it feels like it'll pull anything. Well, we're back to the shop of the yard. The old power smoke, we did it, didn't hurt anything. But uh, geez, she was a little bit of a white knuckle. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna talk about it in a second here. Straps are still tight. This truck didn't go anywhere. Trailer looks all right. Tires are still all there in one piece. We're not missing any rubber, thankfully. But uh, yeah, we'll get this thing unloaded and then I'll give you guys my conclusion about what I think and how this truck towed today, at least with me behind the wheel. All right, guys, it's the next day. I'm back home. I just wanted to take a night to think about what my concluding thoughts were about this tow. When I was on the highway, like I mentioned, it was just not really comfortable at all. The trailer was swaying like crazy and it, it made me honestly a little bit uncomfortable, like I said, driving the thing. Now, first we'll talk about our official CAT scale weight. So officially the trailer weighed 16,540 pounds or something like that. And then the tongue weight was officially 1,608 pounds. So. Our tongue weight was basically 10%. It was right where it needed to be. So it doesn't really make sense why the trailer was swaying so much. The only thing I could think of is the two concrete blocks right at the back weighing roughly about 5,000 pounds, um, you know, kind of maybe teetering the thing. But like I said, our tongue weight was correct in spec. So, it, you know, the trailer shouldn't have really swayed. There should have been enough weight on the truck to really pull it tight, but that was not the case. Um, you know, looking back when we pulled with the Duramax, again, there were two concrete blocks behind the rear axles, just like I had yesterday. And that truck was like a rock going down the road. It was just super comfortable. It just drove and there was no, there was no drama. So I don't know what to conclude. Um, you know, obviously having the trailer 700 pounds overweight is, is my fault, but I, I honestly don't think that is what made the trailer sway so much. I would hate to conclude that it was the, the truck itself. I, I don't know if I believe that either. So, um, you know, maybe we'll have to redo the test with, with some different cargo setup. But as of right now, that was not a fun towing test. If I had to choose between the Power Stroke and the Duramax, yes, the Power Stroke is a, well, it feels like a much more powerful engine. Um, but I have to say, it would be the Duramax 100% because as a full package, that truck just pulled its load seamlessly, where the Power Stroke, yes, had plenty of power, plenty of get up and go, but as a package unit, truck and trailer, it was not, it was just not comfortable. Um, and so that is my conclusion. Let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm super curious, um, <laughs> as always. Drop a comment down below if you have anything to say, and uh, we'll go from there. Anyways. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. And if you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up. Um, and obviously, if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe because 
we'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.